sir. This is genuine hard-wearing Barathea. How much is it again? It's £120, sir. Now, I know you may think that's expensive, but let me point out one or two details. There's the hand-stitched lapels. The last two buttons on the cuffs are fully operational. You wouldn't get that on a cheap jacket, would you, Mr. Lewis? No, you wouldn't, Mr. Humphreys. The buttons were just stitched on. That is, uh, how does the back look? Oh, it's very snug at the back, sir, for you. You've got such broad shoulders. How about a pine paisley scarf to go around the neck? How much is it? Fourteen pounds. <laughs> but look. Oh. Yes, that does set off the neck, doesn't it, Mr. Lucas? Oh, yes, it does, Mr. Humphreys. And the hand stitching and the buttons on the cuff. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> well, this looks rather nice. How much is that? Oh, that's our special offer, sir. Three pounds twenty, genuine wooden ash. I like it. Ah, good morning, sir. I'm sorry I wasn't here to attend to you myself. I've just been to the cloakroom. May I say, sir, how much that jacket suits you? Oh, it's an exemplary fit. Congratulations, Mr. Humphreys. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Mm. The gentleman's also taking the pine paisley scarf. And the ash walking stick. Yeah, oh, I should say the ash walking stick would be more suitable with a tweed jacket. Now, this one, for oh, example. Oh, no, I do like that. You like it? Yeah, there you are. Try it on, sir. Yeah. Please. Thank you. There we are. This is a special offer, sir. This is £140. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy the cotton wool to stuff in them on the ground floor. <laughs> Miss Brown. Yes, Captain Peacock. There's still no sign of Mrs. Slocum. Well, she said she might be late this morning on account of she's shifting her flat. You should have given her the day off like she asked. She's going to be in a right state when she gets here. Good morning, Captain Peacock. Oh, pussy, do be a good Oh, the removal men have only just left. I see you followed the van with your old cock linen. <laughs> I was lucky to get a van at all with these lightning transport strikes. Mrs. Slocum, there is a strict rule that staff may not bring pets to the store. Well, you know how clumsy those removal men are. I'm not having them handling my pussy. <laughs> and if you take my advice, you'll keep away yourself. She's in a very disturbed state. I happen to be very good with animals. Hello, little pussy. <laughs> well, I did warn you. It bit me. Well, she hasn't had her breakfast yet. I suggest you put your menagerie out of sight and keep it there. Oh, Miss Brahms, would you take them into the fitting room? Don't be frightened, little pussy. It's only your Auntie Shirley. <laughs> oh! Oh! Must have taken a weight off your mind to have completed your removal. What do you mean, completed it? All I've done is see the stuff on the van. All they've got to do is dump it. I'm the one that's got to sort it all out. I should have had three days off for this. Believe me, I tried, but Mr. Rumble wouldn't hear of it. Ladies' intimate apparel. I said ladies' intimate apparel. All right, then knickers and knocker cover. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, supervisor, may I be of any assistance? Mr. Armstrong? Oh, it's the van driver. I've got what? I've got squatters in my new flat. Oh. <laughs> we, well, I mean, they can't, they can't squat on me. I mean, they've got to squat on people who, who live in council flats and millionaires. Well, what am I going to do with all my furniture? That wasn't a very helpful suggestion. <laughs> no, I can't take it back to the old flat. The other people will have moved in now. I know. Can we leave it on the van? Mm. He's got another job at lunchtime. Well, you'll just have to give me a minute to think. Uh, look, tell me your telephone number and then I can ring you back. Right, I've got it. What am I going to do? Who am I going to squat on? Yes, but I've had a word with Mr. Grace, and in view of your predicament, he is prepared to help. And so I should hope. If I'd had the day off, I could have been in time and stopped this. Well, all you had to do was ask. I did, through Captain Peacock. You remember I made the suggestion in the washroom, sir? Yes. Well, <clears throat> I couldn't hear very well through the door. Anyway, you should know by now that I close my ears to suggestions in the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
However, in view of the mix-up, young Mr. Grace has agreed that you may store your effects in Department 5B, which is on the top floor. It's uh, vacant at the moment, pending refurbishment. Oh, thank you, Mr. Rumble. I'm very grateful. Well, the contractors don't start work for a couple of weeks, so that should give you time to get yourself sorted out. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Rumbold. <laughs> well, well, they were a large organisation. We top executives do have hearts. Oh, yes, I can see that. Well, I must tell the van driver where to deliver. Uh, may I use your phone? Certainly not. Use the call box by the lift. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, may I have that piece of chicken you've left on your plate for my posse? Certainly. <laughs> Not with your fingers, Mr. Lucas. She's very particular. Uh, would your little companion like the head of my sardine? Uh, no, thank you. She has very few teeth left. And her poor gums can't crunch the skulls. <laughs> That's why Mr. Goldberg didn't eat it. How long is it going to take you to get rid of these squashes? I don't know. Well, where are you going to sleep tonight? Well, I suppose I shall just have to go to an hotel. Oh. Oh. Unless, of course, one of my friends offers me accommodation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, I'd help anybody out if they were stuck. I'd like to ask you to my place, Mrs. Slocum. Oh, thank you, Captain Peacock and dear gents. <laughs> Unfortunately, my wife is away visiting her sister, so we'd be alone in the house and there might be a lot of talk. From all accounts, that's all there would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we have a spare room. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Uh, but unfortunately... Uh, Last night, the cold water tank sprang a leak, which brought down the ceiling all over the bed, taking with it uh, the wiring which electrified the springs. You never mentioned that this morning. Well, it slipped my memory until this very minute. <laughs> Unfortunately, we haven't got a spare bed, but if you're really desperate, Mrs Slocum, you could always come and snuggle up with me. I don't think so, Mr Lucas. If you're worried you couldn't control yourself, I could always put a bolster down the middle. <laughs> I don't think my being homeless is a subject for joking. I quite agree, Mrs Slocum. Oh, Mr Humphreys, I knew that you'd be sympathetic. <laughs> what a pity I've got those three Pakistani nuns staying. <laughs> Not only have they got the spare room, but they're on the sofa as well. You didn't mention that this morning, Mr Humphreys. I forgot it while you were forgetting your ceiling. <laughs> Which leaves you, Miss Brahms. Oh, <clears throat> well, I don't think I ever mentioned it, but my brother's a rugby player. You never even mentioned you had a brother. <laughs> well, anyway, his team's got to set off early tomorrow for a big match, so they're staying the night at our place to be ready for the bus. You see, they usually go on the train, but with all the sudden strikes, they didn't want to take the risk. Uh, so anyway, that means we've got big, hairy, beer-drinking men in every room. Oh, well, I've got the answer to that. Why don't you and Mrs Slocum go and have Mr Humphrey's bed and he can have yours? <laughs> <laughs> I can just picture it brought down by a flying tackle as I take my teddy to the bathroom. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr Slocum, your goods and chattels has just arrived and it's on the way up on the goods lift. Uh, our men have been working right through to lunchtime, so if you could see them right uh, with money, uh, I mean. Oh, yes. I'd better go and supervise. It's a terrible thing to have happen at her time of life. I don't think you showed up very well as friends. I rather feel that mine was the only genuine excuse. What are you talking about? We really have got 15 rugby players staying the night. Well, mine was nearly true. I mean, there will be nuns by the time we get to the fancy dress party. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going at? Well, I'm not sure. I discussed it with them. I might go as the Pope. But I won't know for certain till I get to the end of our road and see whether there's black or white smoke coming out my chimney. <laughs> Madam, if you want to change the garment, just bring it back with the receipt. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Slocum, you've been about two hours. It really isn't good enough. Well, I have to sort my things out. You found anywhere to stay yet? No, but I've had a marvellous idea. There's plenty of room. I'm going to stay in my flat. You haven't got a flat. Oh, yes, I have. There's lots of room on that floor. So, instead of piling my things up, I've set them all out just like they were at home. There's everything up there. Water, gas, plugs. It's self-contained. You mean you're going to stay here in the store? Why not? 
What do you think they'll let you? I'm going to ask Mr. Grace personally. All you've got to do is flutter your eyelashes and cross your legs. And he's like putty. Well, at his age, he's like putty all the time. <laughs> Still, if you're going to try fluttering your eyelashes, you'd best have these clear parcher extra long de loops. What do you want? Is someone to see Mr. Grace? Well, you can't disturb him now. I'm exhausted just trying to get him to sleep. But it's very important. <sighs> Well, on your own head be it, but wake him gently. Good evening, Mr. Oh, Grace. Uh, oh, where am I? I'm sorry to have to oh. wake you. So I hope it's important. I was in the middle of a very nice dream. You look very good in a girl guide's uniform. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Grace. Um, Mrs. Slocum would like a word with oh, you now. Oh, very well. I'll tell her I'll give her a few moments. I'll see you now, Mrs. Slocum. Oh, it's very good of you to see me, Mr. Grace, when you're so busy. Not at all. Please sit down. Uh, well, uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> uh, not a prize, I see. No, Mr. Grace, you don't understand. It's not that what I came for. Good, because I wasn't going to give you one. <laughs> no, I want permission to sleep on your premises. You're very determined about this rise, aren't you? <laughs> oh, very well. You can uh, bring one small bag and your nighty, and you'll have to go very early in the morning before the servants come. <laughs> no, Mr. Grace, you don't understand. You see... You are, little sweetheart. Indeed, nice to be back in your usual corner. Oh, pussy, it's lovely to be at home again. Hey, I, I wired you up to the juice and I've connected the gas stove so you can boil a kettle. Oh, thank you, Mr. Harmon. Well, I seem to have everything except a front door. <laughs> oh, hang about. Boric? Hello? Kiss him with that wall unit, will you? Let's have it over here. Left over from Grace Brothers' ideal home display. Give it to me. Can you manage? Yeah. Or shall I fetch up to your bowl to give you a hand? You can manage, can you? Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, now I've got somewhere to put me door mat. <laughs> and somewhere to put the cat out as well. <laughs> How many pints of milk do you want in the morning? Well, they don't deliver up here, do they? I'll fetch it up from the canteen for you. Oh, Mr. Harmon, that is good of you. Right, I'll be off then. Well, I'll just see you out. Yeah, right. Bye-bye. 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 Yes? I forgot to plug in the phone. Can you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can give you an outside line or an internal one, see? Yeah, very nice place you've got here, isn't it? Oh, and it's ever so easy to run. <laughs> must, be, must be worth a bit being detached. Whoever can that be? I didn't give anybody my number. Mrs Slocum's residence, arm and the butler here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Mr Rumbolt for you. Hello. Mrs Slocum, I'm quite aware that young Mr Grace gave you a tea break so that you could arrange your domestic affairs, but I have called a staff meeting here in my office. If you could be here, I'd appreciate it. Well, certainly, Mr Rumbold. Oh, I better hurry. It sounds right ratty. <laughs> ah, are we all assembled? Um, except Mrs Slocum, who's been absent for most of the day. Tell tale tit. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> Was it necessary to wear your hat and coat to come down from the fifth floor? It's very chilly in the goods lift. I hope this isn't going to take long. I've left my front door on the latch. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I'm uh, sorry to have to tell you, but the train drivers are going out on strike. And the bus drivers are probably going out in sympathy. Well, it's nice to know they've got sympathy for someone. Be that as it may, uh, young Mr. Grace has agreed to close the store early to enable you all to get home before everything shuts down. Oh, that's very generous of him, sir. May we thank him personally? I'm afraid he went home half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs>
Your taxi is here, Mr. Rumbold. Oh, thank you very much. Well, good luck, everybody. <coughs> Mr. Rumbold, are you going my way? I'm sure you'd be the first to know if he was. <laughs> got to go upstairs to my flat, put the kettle on, and have a nice cup of tea in front of the fire with my pussy. Isn't it lucky that none of my friends had the problem of giving me accommodation? <laughs> <laughs> this year's fancies are past in fancies. These my heart under. La 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 It's me, Mr. Humphrey. But I'm in my nighty. Well, I can see that. <laughs> oh, just a minute then. I'm sorry to be so long, but you can't be too careful now. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> now then, would you like to come into the parlour? Oh, I say. <laughs> well, now, what brings you to these parts? Well, I got on the bus and we'd only gone about 200 yards and the conductor became very sympathetic and said to us, get off. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll just pop in and see Mrs. Slocum before I start my long, long 15-mile lonely walk home. <laughs> Well, I suppose you could always use my spare room. On the other hand, of course, there might be talk. I don't think so. Not in my case. <laughs> Go on, then. Put your feet up. I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Oh, do you know, that's just what I could do with. <laughs> you're quite different, aren't you, when you're at home to when you're in the store? <laughs> Behind your counter, you look so stern. Here at home, you're all... Feminine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I use less makeup at home. Well, wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give you a hand? No, there's no need. Oh, I don't mind. I'd like to see your kitchen. Oh, well, come on then. <laughs> oh, what a lovely view. Yes. <laughs> I love the continent. <laughs> Very compact, isn't it? Well, there's only me since Mr. Slocum was taken. Mm. Was it very sudden? Oh, there was no warning at all. The fraud squad came at eight o'clock. <laughs> well, while the kettle's boiling, I'll just show you to your room. Do you mind leading the way? I've forgotten where the door is. <laughs> this way. That's the guest toilet. Only it's not connected up. Very cosy. <laughs> yes, I had a brush salesman staying here. He used to spend hours in there planning his campaigns. Mm, it's got a history, then. <laughs> well, this is your little room. Uh, it has a half-queen-size bed. Better than no queen at all. <laughs> um, do you sleep as nature intended? Mrs. Slocum, I've never done anything as nature intended. <laughs> no, I mean, um, do you sleep in the all together? Why do you ask? 
I've got some pyjamas here. Oh, you've entertained a gentleman visitor before. <laughs> These belong to the brush salesman. Oh, yes, I can see that by the bristles. <laughs> That's the jacket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a very big man. On top, yes. <laughs> They didn't have a right lot down below. <laughs> now, here's your teas made, and there's a little telly in this cupboard. Oh, I'll just switch your blanket on. There, it'll take the chill off for you. <laughs> Mrs Slocum, you certainly know how to look after a person. Well, it's nice to have somebody to care for. Well, you seem to enjoy it. I bet your mother does too. She says it's time I left home. Well, <laughs> just for tonight, you have. <laughs> yes, and the way the buses are going, it might be a week. Oh, oh a whole week together. <laughs> Come to think of it, it might not be a bad thing. Do you know, I was clearing out our attic at home the other day and I found this old calendar called The Week of Love. It said, Monday for meeting, Tuesday for talking, Wednesday for wishing, Thursday for touching, Friday, for some reason, had been torn out. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Humphreys, I want you to put yourself completely in my hat. Mrs Slocum, if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, it's not going to be easy for me. <laughs> just, just pretend you're, you're on a camping holiday with a friend. That wasn't the best suggestion you could make. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> what a lovely bedspread. <laughs> Those bristles get everywhere. <laughs> now, just try that bed. It's mm. ever so comfy. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> got a lot of life in it. <laughs> There's a lot of life in me as well. <laughs> <laughs> me mother. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. Whoever it is, I'll get rid of him. Oh, it's all right. I haven't read this one. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Captain Peacock. Well, I'm in my night attire. You'll have to wait a minute until I find my dressing gown. Is it a checked one? Yes. It's hanging on the hat stand. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry to disturb you, but uh, uh, the strike has hit the underground and all the buses have stopped. Aren't you afraid there might be talk? As long as that's all there is. Oh, come in. Wipe your feet. Well, I thought rather than prowl the streets looking for a hotel, I'd, I'd borrow your sofa. I, oh, <laughs> you've clipped me to the post. You're going to have the spare room. It's down there. <laughs> You're very hospitable, Mrs. Slocum. Oh, it looks rather cosy. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me the spare room. You've forgotten, Mr. Humphreys. You're accommodation has been taken care of. <laughs> Captain Peacock might see. Not when the lights are out, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> this will do nicely. I've, I've had a sandwich, so you needn't bother about supper. I wasn't going to. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll, uh, I'll turn in. Oh, well, hurry up then. The sooner the better. Sleep well. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> In. Who is it? It's me, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's like running a ruddy hotel. Oh, come on in then. Where have you gone? <laughs> I'm here. Where are you? I'm out here. And hurry up. I'm in my night attire. I can't work the lock. Come in, wipe your feet. I'm not <laughs> I know. You can't get home and you want to spend the night. Well, fate does seem to have thrown us together, Mrs. Slocum. Oh, no, it hasn't. You can sleep in the spare room with Captain Peacock. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'll sleep on the sofa. On second thoughts, I'll sleep with Captain Peacock. <laughs> Listen, I haven't eaten all day. I suppose a bacon and egg is out of the question. How did you guess? 
I thought it might have been. I'll just lie down and have a quiet rumble. At home. We wondered if you could give us shelter for tonight. Come in and wipe your feet. I don't know where you're going to sleep. I mean, Captain Peacock and Mr. Lucas are in the spare room and Mr. Humphreys is on the sofa. I'll go with Peacock. <laughs> Lucas, you're sleeping on the floor. <laughs> it's marvellous, isn't it? I I'll sleep in the bath. After 25 years of marriage, one gets the neck, you know? <laughs> now, see, if we put these two chairs together, Mr Lucas can sleep across these. No, he can't. I mean, if he does that, he'll see that you're not on the sofa. But I am on the sofa. <laughs> yes, but you won't be when everybody's gone, gone to sleep. But we, we might arouse somebody's suspicion. At this rate, we'll be lucky if we rouse anything. <laughs> Can this be? Ooh, with any luck, it'll be the brush salesman. <laughs> don't tell me you can't get home and you've come to spend the night. Well, I don't want to put you out. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put you out because I've got all the rest in here and there's no more room. Well, I don't mind sharing your bed. Well, it doesn't happen to be convenient. Oh, well, it wasn't inconvenient when you got stuck at my place and had to share mine. Well... I'm not going out on them streets again. I've had four proposals between here and the bus stop and they wasn't marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Go on and get in. I've got to share with Miss Browns. Oh, I see. <laughs> Are you disappointed or relieved? I'm neither one way or the other. <laughs> I'm afraid that's the way you're still going to be in the morning. <laughs> oh, well. Good night, chicken. <laughs> Hope you don't snow her. <laughs> Mr Humphreys, leave my pussy alone. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 